Hey guys, and welcome to episode 40 of Dad Knows Best. I'm Harrison Woods, and I'm with my co-host, Adam Callum. I feel like you struggle with intros more and more. I would have thought it got easier over time. Certain bits do get easier, okay. um, but the, the issue has arose. By the way, for anyone that is new to the show, either listening or watching or wassling, however you choose to consume this fine, <laughs> fine media, uh, this is just two friends, two dads. He's got two kids, I've got one. <laughs> we share stories, pop tips, you might say, uh, on how to raise your child. Um, Good age difference as well. So how, mm, how old's El now? He is five months. Five, Five months. whole months. So Reg- feels feels like he's fifteen. <laughs> I'll be honest. <laughs> Reggie, my youngest, is coming up to four in July, mm-hmm. uh, and Riley turns six in Jan. So, so yeah, yeah. we have got a good spread. Got a lot of war th- wounds uh, to share. Exactly, and I think the dynamic of uh, the newborn and the not not me, the newborn, <laughs> but the uh, the father with the newborn uh, and the father with the the two kids. <laughs> 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 however you want to splice it um i think it makes for a good uh conversation piece um, well normally we'd be talking about stuff that we bring to the table exactly exactly uh, but, but today adam so i did that t- t- <laughs> you've done this before yeah, a few times you do this professionally mate <laughs> um today is a little bit different today we have a listener email uh and how do they email us adam uh very easily Open up your... I'm, I'm trying to buy time here. <laughs> they email dadknowsbest at nbs.fm. I'll put it here. For anyone that's listening, I'm pointing to the table. For anyone that's watching, I'm pointing to the email. Uh, we got an email, Adam. I'll just dive straight into it. It's from John Hall, fan of the show. Cool. Fan of the show. Hi, John. He says... Can I just make a get? Is this a... <laughs> Is this because I think the last email we had was from Ian Callard, a good friend of mine, who'd like listed out, actually it might have been Peter Little, and that was a voice memo. Is he dropping pop tips on us? Uh, not pop tips. He's got a question, actually. Got a question. Wow. Um, we've got a bit of a scenario for it. Fucking so I think we could. Uh, risky asking me could, new questions could, uh, about uh, parenting. No, this is what people come for. This is why they Definitely stay tuned. This is Definitely why they subscribe. Not. This is why they give us five star reviews on iTunes. This is why they leave reviews, you know. Get it, why you can, mate. <laughs> this is why they subscribe. <laughs> uh, he says. Hey guys, absolutely love the podcast and it certainly sparked a lot of thought over the last couple of months with fatherhood just around the corner for me. Oh, congratulations. My wife is now 16 weeks pregnant and we are both so excited. We recently had our 12-week scan and with it, you have the option of the Down syndrome test, which naturally we went along with uh, and took. Did you, by the way, did you go, did you have that test? Yeah. Yeah. And I'll be really honest. Um... I kind of know what it was. I know, I know Down syndrome. I know what it was testing, mm-hmm. but I never once thought what it meant. One, what it meant, but two, like normally when you get a, when you get results, you sort of know whether they're good, bad, or indifferent. Mm-hmm. I kind of didn't know what lot like, a good or a bad result would look like. I guess bad, negative, res, a positive result would be mm-hmm. a negative outcome, but I don't know what you then what the following actions you then take. Well, for for us, I dur- during the whole pregnancy, it was just a case of if we can have. A test for something, we'll we'll, we'll have the test. Why, 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 why yeah. wouldn't you? So, no, um, knowing is better than not knowing in exactly, all situations. Exactly. Um, he continues. Uh, we were told if there was anything flagged up in the test, then we would get a call back to discuss. Sadly, a few days later, the hospital called to advise us that the nuptial translucency, which was two point nine millimeters, coupled with her blood results, have put us in the higher risk bracket of our baby having Down syndrome. Our chances are apparently one in one hundred and fifty. Uh, it's a very small chance, less than one percent. But obviously, this isn't what we wanted to hear, and naturally, we have spent some time uh, worrying about it. The, the results document uh, does state at the bottom that most women who have screened positive results uh, have perfectly ha- perfectly normal uh, births and coupled with the slim chance that it still is we are trying to remain upbeat we've t- we have talked it through together i really need my glasses for this but <laughs> i'm so far away from my screen um we've talked it through together both straight away have said that regardless of the outcome we wouldn't dream of terminating at any stage it's our baby and we're going to love them more than life itself, no matter what life throws at us and them. Uh, just wondered if you guys went through the test, had similar results or have any thoughts 
on our situation as we are not alone from what I've read online as many people get given similar results and many have had perfectly healthy babies. Look forward to hearing your thoughts and this might be a worthwhile discussion. Hope both you and your families are well and staying safe given the current situation we're all in. And again, keep up the great work on the podcast. All the best, John. First, the absolute legend. Mm -hmm. um, I did actually reply to him over the weekend while I was queuing for 40 minutes to go into my uh, Sainsbury's, my local little Sainsbury's, just to get two Easter eggs and a bag of sugar. So I sent him a nice email back, um, but I thought it'd be a interesting. Not, not, just any, I just want to not just any Easter eggs. You've even got me excited about these Easter eggs. You got big. You literally well, came they, in and said, were, I've, had, "I've had lots of eggs." <laughs> it was the size of my head. <laughs> well, they, these were the, these were the 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 smaller in air quotes ones that I was getting because I wanted to make that fancy Bailey's drink. So these ended up being these ended up being. So the the eggs that I waited forty minutes for fit just inside the bigger egg okay but not like oh it fits inside and rattles about it's like no it's like they molded the bigger egg on this egg if that makes sense so let's pull it back to John's. those russian dolls let's pull it back to john uh, anyway thank you for emailing john by the way um cut, there's a load there's a load of things that sort of went through my head um as you read as you're reading that through um firstly i'm a stats guy i like numbers yep uh, I'll, I'll take I'll take one in 150 all day uh, every day I think the fact that the fact that John and his partner have had this news I understand I 100% understand and by the way this is one man's humble opinion and views this yep. is not right or wrong I just want to fucking put that clear before I get an email saying you're wrong I'm I'm wrong email a lot of the dad knows best at mbs.fm <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah I think I think it it's obviously clear for me. There's okay. There's a few things that I took away, and I'm just going to brain dump them on there, and then we can have a conversation yeah, yeah. about them. Um, <laughs> one, the odds. I'll take those odds every day, regardless of what mm -hmm. what we're betting on. Um, two, the fact that you have clearly stated a couple of times in that email how you've communicated with your partner, and you're both on the same page about this. I think communication trumps everything. I think the fact that you guys are talking about it, you're both on the same page. You guys need to both just rally each other up about this. Um, and just keep over communicating with each other uh, and it sounds like you're doing that anyway so amazing um th three uh no termination love more than life amazing like you fuck you're already fucking nailing mm -hmm. it like um, amazing to hear that um and then four uh was the thing we spoke about on the other podcast which was uh, we rambled for one show and then i went home and I came back and I was like, turn the mics on. I just need to record something. I actually think that learning is applicable here. Uh, and the whole thing about that was there's there's things that you care about. There's mm -hmm. your circle of concern. Uh, and then there is your circle of influence and where you should spend your time and your mental energy uh, is the thing in the middle, the things you care about and the things you can influence. Um, right now, it feels like you're both on the same page. So there's no more actions to be taken then. You and your partner are on the same page about the whole situation. Um, I understand you are concerned about it, but right now you cannot influence it. Mm -hmm. um, so park it and just, especially given the current circumstances, there's so many other things to put your energy into. Um, you are where you are. Uh, you're obviously in a caring relationship and I'm so happy for you that you've got a, uh, a baby on a way. It's going to, yep. everyone says it's going to change everything. It, it really does. Um, it does. <laughs> it really does. <laughs> Honestly, he's, uh, he's happy. Yeah, um, he's cute. But I think, uh, think about what you can, what you care about, think about what you can influence and, uh, right now, yes, you've got this. You've got the feedback. You've got results. You're one in one fifty. You can't do anything about it. Uh, and for me, it's you're so lucky to be where you are uh, in the relationship that you're in. And you've got a baby on the way. Just keep focusing on the stuff that you can actually make an impact on. Um, and I just wish you, the family, and every, everyone right now, all the health in the world. Um, it's applicable for everyone listening right now. To be honest. Yeah, I uh, echo that sentiment. Um, I think for me, I remember. I remember having this test and was thinking well, of, co of course I'll, of course we'll have it if we can find out the information sooner rather than later great we could prepare for it whatever um and i remember thinking that i like it's, it's interesting when it comes to uh, what your opinion might be when it's someone else's situation mm -hmm. compared to when it's actually happening to you because i, I think if for example like this is like a super low chance um, like less than 1% I would say I guess a, a question I'd, I would ask you quickly is if it was like a 40% chance 
what would you say? Do you like, th- yeah, my number, don't... weirdly, I knew where you were going to take that question. And I thought, where does this become something where I probably will need to do more thinking? Mm. It kind of was at the 10 to 20% chance. So if something was a 20, I'd go with 20. If something was a 20% chance, for me, that's, and I'm thinking just from a stats guy, mm. like, cool, let's just one in five. I play, I play a lot of poker yeah. and I kind of know what those numbers look like and I know how fucking often that one in five can come in against you when someone's trying to pull a flush mm-hmm. draw on you. Anyway, um, <laughs> um, I think the I think the problem is right now, especially for me on the mics, is I'm so uneducated on the 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 life imp- and don't get me wrong, zero fucks about the impact it makes on my life. Mm-hmm. I've, this is where I'm at. Depending on the the impact of quality of life for that child. Yep. And I also don't know enough about at what stages pe- like termination is deemed medically acceptable but not morally acceptable i think there's a big question there because i think those two things i think those two time things are different in people's minds i'm not educated enough to know but i feel like you can terminate very late considering to when potential things are developing in that in that embryo in that baby however we want to call it at that point so there's probably a number of things i need to look into but to answer your question two in f- like one in five 20 percent would make me look mm-hmm. in terms of what are the long-term impacts that I am potentially putting onto this child by bringing them into the world. <clears throat> and then what does termination look like? At what point is it, you're not terminating anything really to the point where even if there's a 1% chance that you're terminating some developed life, mm-hmm. uh, cards off for me. Cause then I just couldn't do it. I don't think. And I'm saying that now sat around a table with just me and you and, and a really sensitive topic. Um, and that's kind of, that's kind of, kind of my point is that like we can, we can say what we think we do at this point in time on, on some made up stati- statistics that I'm just sort of throwing at you. And yeah. it's like, oh yeah, well I'd seriously think about it. And, but like what I realized, um, what was a bit of a reality check as well is I find that we can say one thing because we're not experiencing it, but when you're actually the one that has to make the real decision, obviously mm-hmm. it's a completely different story. And I think most of the time, unless the odds were probably stacked against you, that you are probably going to keep it right. Because, yeah. you, because you like, I, I don't know what um, John's situation was trying to get pregnant or anything like that. Like if you've been trying for a while and, 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 a and this is the, this is the first time you've actually managed to conceive, then obviously everything's riding on this, and you, what, you would ne- you would never end it anyway, sort of thing, maybe. Um, but but that's the thing but, is, I think I think what for me how I rationalise the the logic is there's thinking about how it impacts you, mm-hmm. as in the thinking, and it's extremely valid. I think yet we've been trying. Let's say we've been trying for four years. We finally got pregnant. Mm. That is a decision between you and your partner, and how it impacts you. You need to work that out. Then you need to work out separate completely separately what is the impact on this kid like and bring this into the world with this chance what is it you need both sets but you need to keep them exclusive from each other because um that kid does not give a shit that you've been trying for four years Mm -hmm. it's about what is the quality and i think if you look at them both different mutually exclusive and then make a decision that's important also we can chat about it as much as you want on the mics um but being two blokes on the mics, we can try and rationalize it and think about the stats and stuff like that. And we've, I've, I've experienced it with me is I only really became daddy when he arrived. Uh, yep. Like when I could hold him very real for me, uh, for a mother, very different story. Um, yeah. Cause they've been, they've been with him. They've got an attachment for, for nine months or however long. Yeah, so they've got an attachment much stronger and deeper than you by the time that baby arrives because it's just maternal. It's just how this thing is developed inside their body. Um, so I think it. I think it. Then you're in a real shit situation if you and your other partner, or the half, are on different pages. Mm. I think the the way this all falls down is if you make a decision that you both don't agree to, you have to find common ground. Otherwise. Mm. Even whether you terminate, whether you don't terminate, whether you carry on, if you're not on the same page, you are fucked for a long time because it will always be the decision that you couldn't agree on. And it's the most important decision you can make. One one thing, and I, I said this to John in email as well, one thing that I completely didn't even think about was that, so we, through the pregnancy was, everything was fine. Test results were all clear and all this jazz. So I was like, cool, sweet going to be easy we're going to have a we're going to have a midwife led pregnancy we're going to go to a birthing center instead of the hospital we're going to do all these positive things everything's going to be great it's going to just fall out and we're just going to be on our way turns out that the closer we got to 
the due date, the more intense things were getting, the more uh, like Emmy's blood pre- blood pressure was rising, and there was all these potential Com- yeah. complications that were all of a sudden creeping in that we then couldn't go and have a midwife led birth and things like that. So even though we got green lights up until this point, it all of a sudden escalated towards the end. So I think. So I would like so when when it all happened, like the actual the actual birth side of things was a lot more intense for us because it was like holy shit, I didn't I thought everything was going to be fine, and then all of a sudden everything's gone to shit, essentially. Um, so it kind of just made me think, well, uh, with John's situation, this is obviously a, a bump in the road right now, but the stats are super low, um, and like there's so many more things that could happen mm-hmm. that are out of your control as well. It's kind of what you were saying before. Like, don't try not to worry about it until it's actually happening. But it just made me think. Yeah, you can. You might. This might be a bit of a knock right now. That it's it's a bit of bit of news that you were hoping not to get, as as no one would. But there's so many there's so many other things that can happen. You just need to like just tackle it one day at a time, and just you know just be be prepared for for anything really. But I think unless it's actually happening, you can't can't lose sleep over it or try not to a hundred percent i think i wouldn't even call it like he's got news now he's Mm. just been given a heads up it's not even news today it's it's a bit of information less than one percent as well it's not it's that's it's almost it and i'm we one thing we have to make sure is we don't play this down because someone listening to this right now uh has gone through this one in 150 and uh, it turns out that their child has it got Down syndrome. Like 100% understand that. But I think right now in John's situation specifically is someone's given him a heads up and said, by the way, uh, one in 150 chance, just giving you a, a note right now, mm-hmm. just so if that percentage comes in, you've at least had a little bit yep. of time to digest what the information is. But for, for me, John, uh, it's business as normal for you right now, mm-hmm. mate. It's just carry on focusing on the stuff that you can control. Weirdly speaking to the wife about stuff, not like this, but similar concept the other day, which is, um, we're talking about COVID and bits like this. Yep. And it was, there are so many other things uh, that we have to focus on that we can control uh, because she's getting, the problem is, is the headline hit the news the other day, which was like a five-year-old died of mm. Corona. Corona had underlying health conditions. But what I'm seeing is with the wife is everything, every, the younger the child, the bigger the fear. Uh, which I complete, which I completely <laughs> correct, which I completely understand. So we anti back wipe um, all our shopping and stuff like that. So like shoes off at the door, hand washing, don't bring shoes and or clothes into the living room and things like yep. that. Like everything goes off at the front door. Go up, get changed, get washed. Yeah. If we go shopping, we wipe everything down. So obviously, like it. I'll be honest. It's a little bit like this. Feels a little bit OTT, but there is 100% justification of why like for the for me wiping something down for the sake of her feeling better yep it's worth it you're going to do it but to my point is with that example specifically is you are doing something because you can control it yep um where it's that's that's the positive energy mm. and to your point yes you might be 0.0001% chance that there's something on that bag mm-hmm. But it's a hundred percent chance that the it, yeah. activity of doing it is making your partner mm-hmm. feel more comfortable. Um, the right thing to do. Yeah. Uh, but I think there are so many things going on that we can focus on. I was trying to speak to the wife about it. Is um, we have to just look at today and what we can do. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I th- it's weird how this podcast and the other podcast and everything that I'm doing right now is pulling to the same thing, uh, which is we. I think it's because everyone's emotions are very heightened right now about what's going on in the world with COVID. Uh, and John's got that to think about. He's got this news. Uh, I don't want to call it news. It's not like... it's a, Information. It's a information. Um, only focus on the stuff that you can actually influence mm-hmm. right now. Um, yeah. Just be excited, I think, more than anything. And a little bit scared. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just enjoy the ride. Um, en- enjoy the easy part being the uh, the man in this situation because, like, like, like I say, I, I, went, I went into that pregnancy like, I, I, I'm looking forward to two weeks off, kicking my feet up, going to be in that labor room playing Clash, of, Clash Royale or whatever. <laughs> no. <laughs> Didn't yeah. have a moment. So, like, yeah, it's just enjoy it just enjoy it I think the key thing mm-hmm. is for you now John is 
uh, whether you plan to have one, two, five, fucking a football team, I don't care. Um, but right now you're going through something that like not to sound too fucking cliche about the whole thing, but you're going through a, a life changing experience. Mm-hmm. Um, embrace it. Keep communicating with your missus. Um, and it sounds like you're a positive guy from the way that you frame the email. So just, as I say, just keep communicating, stay positive and only focus mm-hmm. on the stuff that you can control. But um, yeah. Yeah. I think we'll, uh, we'll leave it there. Um, just thought it, it super was super interesting. Super interesting. Um, yeah. And it, and it's funny how like words can make something sound more intense. Like if you said, oh, there's a, there's a, there's a less than 1% chance of something. It's like, okay, cool. Less than 1%. Mm-hmm. Sweet. But if you say, oh, you're at risk. They sound like two drastically different. Etymology. Meaning the words, bro. That's what I keep. <laughs> meaning the words. But that sounds like a 40, 40 to 60% chance, right? When you say something's at risk. Yeah. yeah well, you, in, in your head, you have your own version of what at mm-hmm. risk means so, uh, some people that might be 10 percent. some people might mean it conveys 90 percent, but mm-hmm. it's still it's the alert and it, the word risk puts you on edge mm. and it's like I, I don't know what the odds are Should, maybe maybe a google can find it but like there's a chance every time you get in your car and drive to work and back every day that you might not make it home. Yeah, it's the exact conversation I have with the so, wife. So like, it, it might it might be a higher percentage. Your sorry, a, a, but that's where a, I fucked a, up. A, a my that's where I fucked up because I was trying to use, use like, that as a as a yeah, defense yeah. argument. She went, "You shouldn't leave the house." No, no. I was, I, the, here's what I was doing is because of the death, the child deaths because of Corona. Mm-hmm. Um, everyone is like a massive punch it's like it feels like it has a significant impact to sarah's thought process and mental health around what's going on mm-hmm. it just, fear just goes through the roof when all these headlines come out and then we have to sort of like just bring it back so i went and, down- and they're designed because because they know that people will it will whip up a frenzy saying child child mm-hmm. dies of whatever like it's, none of the headlines it said like underlying conditions impact five-year-old child it, it yeah. never leads with that it's five-year-old anyway. inconclusive information <laughs> waiting to hear more it's like no the tidbit that we and get ju- <laughs> just just to put it out there, um, if you are listening to this, uh, I am in a very fortunate position that none of my loved ones or anyone that I specifically know have, have been directly impacted by mm-hmm. corona. Um, I hope you're in the same boat. If you're not in the same boat, uh, me and I know Harry echoes it, s- send all of our love and best wishes. Mm-hmm. Um, as well and as I hope you're socially distancing as well. Yeah. <laughs> Don't be one of the people that's in a park. Anyway, I'm not going I'm not, I'm not to use this as a rant. I just want to say that uh, keep keep things in perspective right now. Mm-hmm. If you are uh, being furloughed or self-employed and struggling, put the big picture in fucking perspective. Everyone around you, and I hope this is the case, your family, your loved ones are all healthy. We are going to get through this. Um, please put all work and stuff in perspective. And for me as a business owner, obviously work is really important for me, but we, I am so thankful uh, that every single person that I love and care about, none of them have, as of today, touch wood, been directly impacted by this. Please keep everything in perspective right now. I think it's hugely important for your mental health. Um, focus on the stuff that you can control. And if you have been impacted, uh, thoughts, best wishes and love to all your family. Um, I know and uh, it's, it's weird how all this is coming together mm-hmm. right now. Uh, we're in very weird times. Um, and if people have been a long time listening to this, it's amazing how getting one email can change the whole tone mm-hmm. of the show. Um yeah. Uh, anyway, sorry, I, I jumped in and you and you were oh, talking. Sorry. sorry, this is what I was explaining. Uh, I, I then used these headlines. To, I combated these headlines with data, and I was like, mm, "Big mistake." Yeah, you don't use facts. Don't use data. Don't <laughs> use facts. And, and I'm like, literally, like, well, here's all the deaths, and here's the percentage of deaths of people under the age of six. And I'm like, searching this data and making, basically, building a fucking presentation. <laughs> <laughs> but it doesn't work uh, which and, and this is to my point which I tried to make at the top of the show because is, let me guess she looked she looked at the small number and said C yeah exactly <laughs> B- because and I think uh, and the reason I very quickly sideways stepped out of my my my, com- my that point because I realized that I was doing it again where I was using data to make logic out of mm-hmm. something whereas every single one of those deaths is fucking meaningful mm-hmm. To, like, it's, it's, it's not, not data it's to not someone. a data it's, to it's, someone it's a family member yeah. it, exactly um and it took my conversation with my wife to, me trying to rationalize it and i was like listen there's a higher chance of me like stepping outside or having a car crash on the m42 than dying from this uh and then she was like well just 
that's why I don't want you working. That's why I don't want you driving to work. I want you to work from, I'm like, this didn't work the way that I planned it to work. Uh, so pop tip, just to bring it back, is in times like this, don't fucking try and use data to rationalize emotions. Um, or, or in general, with, with the better off. Only data from, wins, from, though. From personal experience. Data wins. Facts and logic don't usually, like, maybe it's the delivery in which I, like, say it. That was probably my problem. But, but <laughs> Look at slide six. <laughs> <laughs> on this 32 uh, point powerpoint i'm too good there. at making presentations that's my problem uh, <laughs> take a they, seat turn the lights off they come, they come too natural to me <laughs> um but uh just just to pull it all back um john you've got the data but it, it feels to me right now that you've got you've got a wonderful partner you communicate well um mm-hmm. and just to wrap the show up i just want to wish you guys the best uh thank you for being a listener of the, sh- of the podcast mm-hmm. and please keep us up to date with the journey yep definitely um would love to hear what you're going through I'd like to check in john drop us a line harry you normally like to end the show with i'm gonna tell them how to get in touch cool, uh, if you that. if you want to get in touch just like john did you can email dad knows best at nbs.fm um yep yeah, from myself adam uh thank you so much for listening and watching if you're watching not many people are watching <laughs> <laughs> most people are listening cool. listening numbers are good watching numbers not so good <laughs> but it's an audio journey um, but if you want to if you want to put a face to the name you can go over to YouTube and search Dad Knows Best give it a like give it a subscribe whatever you want to do main thing just keep on listening <laughs> don't leave me alone <laughs> see you next time